you can't go from a $2,000 a night hotel suite to a penitentiary and understand it. Uh, sure. The dark periods you entered and, and taking drugs and drinking and all of that, you know, you, you, you think you're free of all of that? Or whether that's still something... I'm sorry, I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? I'm sorry. I <laughs> you were given your first pot at seven years old? Oh, uh, I think it was seven, eight or nine. She's known as the miracle of the snake Robert Downey Jr. I might have been dead as a doornail if I hadn't met her. The judge sentenced Robert to hard time in Corcoran State Prison, home to Charles Manson. I have been called the menace to society. <laughs> You see razor wire fences, you see a lot of correctional officers, all of whose job basically is to protect society from you. How are people when they meet you these days? With the whole jailhouse thing, I think they're just a little worried that I might, you know, put a shim in them. Robert staggered into a neighbor's house incoherent. I'm a strange man in my child's bed. He's unconscious. It's like I have a shotgun in my mouth, and I've got my finger on the trigger, and I like the taste of the gunmetal. I'm running out of resources to keep you out of state prison. I'm going to incarcerate you in a way that's very unpleasant for you. As opposed to incarcerate me in a way that's pleasant? I believe if you understand that's where you're going, maybe it'll save your life. By the time Robert Downey Jr. stood in court, he'd already been arrested and relapsed multiple times. Robert says he's been addicted to drugs since he was eight years old. Yeah, it started that long ago. And then marijuana was a part of your daily family life growing up. It was a staple like rice. It would be hypocritical to uh, not have our kids participate in marijuana, so we thought it was cute to let them smoke it. Everybody's dad is their first projection of that, that archetype of power. He was a filmmaker. To me, it was just so strange being raised in this family where doing underground Maverick films was the norm. When Robert pursued a career in acting, he struggled to leave the drugs behind. You started smoking crack cocaine and something called black tar heroin. Were you still functional? I heard you no matter how high you were, you'd show up on time. Never missed a day, but that's not the point. You know that thing about, you know how it goes when people say, well, yeah, he's a fall down drunk, but he's always at work at 8 a.m. So that's not entirely true because I could be found in the trailer like, what are you doing, Robert? We're five minutes away. And I'd be like, I'm building a space shuttle out of toothpicks. But my behavior was a little aberrant. Despite his continued drug use, Robert's talent and charm convinced people to keep giving him chances. You've put yourself back among the boldest and best actors working today. It was uh, well regarded and you received an Academy Award nomination. Newly married and with his career soaring, from the outside, Robert's life seemed to be perfect. But it wasn't long before Robert spiraled out of control. Robert staggered into a neighbor's house. I have been called a menace to society. <laughs> I'm running out of resources to keep you out of state prison. Maybe it'll save your life. The judge sentenced Robert to hard time in the same prison as Charles Manson. You are in prison, in a cell. Things are, are violent. There's certain things that you do when you enter that system that you wouldn't care to do on the street. By the time I got into prison, it wasn't like, wow, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. It was an extension of things being miserable. But even after he got out of prison, Robert couldn't stay clean. Every time I've relapsed, it's been public. But do you remember driving around naked in a Porsche, throwing imaginary rats out a window? They were real to me. Very disconcerting. And this time, it cost him everything. When someone says, you know, I really wonder if maybe I should go to rehab. Well, uh, you're a wreck, you just lost your job and your wife left you. Uh, you might want to give it a shot. Desperate to save himself, Robert gave sobriety one last shot. It's not that difficult to overcome these seemingly ghastly uh, problems. What's hard is to decide. And when he finally got a chance at acting, the studio didn't trust him enough to pay his full salary. In prison, you earn eight cents an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really? So don't complain about minimum wage. As he tried to prove he was trustworthy to the producers, Robert met the one person who would change his life. She's known as the miracle that saved Robert Downey Jr. We met on a horror movie. She was the producer and we were on location and it really was organic and a very romantic beginning. The first time like he asked you out. It was a flat no. She things. meant it too. I was like, wow, she's not kidding. Were you leery though of his past when you first started dating? He wasn't someone I was considering <laughs> getting together with. I was more like, okay, is he going to show up for the day? Secretly, Susan was drawn to Robert. She saw me in weird science. And at the time I had a space between my teeth and she had a space between her teeth. So her first thought of me was like, oh my God, he's like me. It's okay that I have a space between my teeth. Really? Two thirds of the way through the movie we were doing. When and one we... day I was like, 
Oh, he's actually. But she couldn't let him derail her own dreams. I'm nuts about her. I mean, he's an actor. I have a real job. I'm in the office every day. We were just on slightly different pages at that point. Oh, yeah. So instead of giving Robert chance after chance like everyone else, Susan gave him an ultimatum. Susan said, don't do it anymore or, or I'm, I'm split. Do you worry about relapsing? So, well, yeah, the thought is terrifying. My worldview has to change if I want to really have a shot. The ultimatum made Robert realize he could become a better man. She does not do what everyone else has always done, which is thought. I need to be taken care of. I need to be validated. She doesn't treat you like a child. Correct. She's the real deal. She's my best friend. Oh. And she also just calls me on everything. Robert seized his chance at life. You spend your entire life getting your life together. You do Iron Man, the most gigantic movies right. of the summer. He's able to give you so much with so little. And he works really hard, too. Creatively satisfying. It was very, very, very hard work, and I dug very deep. And as true partners, Robert and Susan rise higher than ever. Any great partner holds their space and lets you fish yourself out of the chasm with a kind of benevolent neglect, which is saying, I can't do this work for you because it doesn't work if I take credit for it. Robert's incredibly humble about things. He's put in the work, and it's starting to pay off. I try to just hold my space so that it's something that is consistent enough for someone else to rely on and have a deep abiding trust in. Because it's never too late to change your life for the better. Do you still get urges to do drugs? I have not even an inkling of a desire. It's easy to embrace hopelessness when things seem insurmountable. I never gave up. I had no intention of making my, my public, my private life, and, and my career so very difficult. I, I hope it's for some higher purpose.